What's up guys, it's Cody Red here, and welcome to episode 19 of the How to Code a Spigot Plugin for 1.15 series. In today's episode, we're going to continue with the NPC kind of plugins, and really all I want to show you guys is how to make a custom skin for your NPC. So in last video, we learned how to create an NPC using packets and NMS. If you didn't watch that video, go ahead and check it out before you see this one. Because all we're going to do in today's video is change the Steve skin to something that we can maybe like a custom one like yourself or like one that we can grab from the Mojang website. And I went ahead and I, I looked up some tutorials to see what other ones are doing. And a lot of them have where like you have to go to a website and copy all like the, the texture and the signature itself and then hard code it in. And we're not going to do any of that. We're actually going to go into the URL, add in the input stream reader, which reads the URL, that, the info from the site. And we're going to grab the info from the site itself. It's all going to be automatic and there's going to be no manual input for the, the admin or whatever, the server owner. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it done. Like I said, we're using the code from last time. I'm inside my NPC class and we're going to create a few things in here. So the first thing I want to do is... Hold on. First thing I want to do is up in here in this parameter, we're going to add a parameter and it's going to be called a string and I'm going to call it skin. So when the person creates the NPC, now we want to pass in the player who's creating it as well as the string name, which is going to be like the skin. So if someone types in slash create NPC space MD underscore five, it's going to create an NPC with MD underscore five skin. So instead of CMAX right here, I'm going to do plus skin which is just the name and now and now that we have that we can go ahead and actually uh create that skin and to do this we need to create a new method and we're cost method a private static and we'll say void no actually uh sorry private static and we'll return a string array and it's going to be called get skin and we're going to pass in the two things just like the create method, player, player, and a string called name. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys two different ways to do this. And the first way, like I said, is to be pulling from the, the Mojang website. And the second way is going to be pulling from the player itself. So every single player has a game profile. We talked about this last time. A game profile. It contains information like the name, the nickname, the string, texture, all this different stuff. And that's what we want to pull. We want to pull that information. So the first way, like I said, is from the Mojang website. And we're put do this in the try and catch. So we're going to try and we're going to catch an exception. E. And now in our try, we're going to type in a bunch of things. We're type in a URL. I'm going to call this URL. And we'll set equal to a new URL. And the URL is going to be this and uh, in the description below I'll have all the URLs posted so you guys can just go ahead and copy it like I'm doing so this is to be the URL and once we have that URL we're do plus name go ahead and import URL and this is going to be the java.net URL one all right like I said we're going into the Mojang website this is the api.mojang so this is where the profiles the game profiles for the players exist and like I said, we're putting in a try and catch because what if this player doesn't exist in Mojang? We're just going to go ahead and do it the other way. So we're inside this URL and can't really do much unless we have a some, something that can read it. So we want to first create something that can read it. So we're going to do an input stream reader. We'll call it reader. Set equal to a new input stream reader. And we're going to pass in the URL dot open oh sorry url dot open stream so obviously in files there's an input and there's an output and uh output is you're outputting something into the file and input your is you're taking it or you're reading it from the file so in this case we are reading the inputs we're reading whatever is in that url Similar to YML files, we dealt with config files before where you read something, you get it. That's similar to what we're doing. We're using getting a reader. So now we have the information 
from this URL, whatever's on that page inside this reader. And now we can actually create the UID. So string UID equals a new JSON parser. And we're going to parse it. We're going to parse the reader. And we're going to say dot get as JSON object dot get. And the thing we want to get is the ID dot get as string. Go ahead, import JSON parser. And what we're doing here, like I said, is this URL has a bunch of information on it. This URL with the name. And we're reading it and we want to get the ID from that URL. The URL has all this different information and we want to get that UID from it. So now we have the UID as a string. We can go ahead and do the same thing over again with a different URL. So URL, URL2 set equal to a new URL and the second URL is going to be this. Like I said, it will be in the description below. I'll probably just go ahead and just throw both these lines in there so you can easier to do it. And that's going to be the second URL and we're going to plus the UID and we're also going to plus question mark unsigned equals false. Now, same thing as above. We are going into another URL and we're grabbing, instead of just the name it, we're getting the UID. The UID holds a little more information. And we're going to do the same exact thing. Input stream reader and we'll call it reader2. Set equal to a new input stream reader URL2 dot uh, open stream. And then we can do something else. So we went to the first URL, we got the information, we got the UID from the first URL. Then we went to the second URL and we're getting the information from the second URL. So what exactly is in this URL? And it's really just the properties of the player. And the properties contain the value uh, and the signature of the skin. Uh, so that's what we want to get. We want to return, that's why we have an array. We want to return two things. We want to return the texture and we want to return the signature. So to do that, first we need to get the properties. So JSON object, we'll call it prop, uh, property. Go ahead, import JSON object. And we'll say equal to a new JSON parser. And we'll say dot parse reader two dot get as JSON object and then dot get and we want to get the properties and once we have the properties we can do I want to space down a little bit so we have more space to see we'll say dot get as JSON array uh, we'll say JSON array and then we want to get the first variable in that array zero and then finally, we're getting as JSON object. I know that's a lot of JSON stuff right there, but really all you need to know is we're moving sort of like a YML kind of style. Um, like, like I said, you guys know how YML files work from config. So say you have something called player and then under player two spaces, you have properties and then under that, you have the texture and then you have the, uh, what's the other one? Uh, signature. And we'll just give it a bunch of value. So this is basically so this is basically what the what the uh, URL holds. So it's sort of like a YML kind of fashion where it holds a player, which is our UID, and then we're getting that property. So this line right here is we're getting the properties. And we want to get the first one, and there's a bunch of different properties, like properties one, there's properties two, blah, blah, blah. We're getting the properties, and then we want to get the signature and the texture from it. So to do that, we're going to use, we create a string called texture, 
set equal to property dot get and what are we going to get As we're going to get the value and then we'll do dot get a string so we went into texture went to player went to the properties and we want to get the value so this right here is value so we want to get the value we want to get whatever the hell the value is and i'll show you example what the stuff looks like in a second and then finally we want to get the signature and the signature will be property dot get and you can probably guess it it'll be signature and then dot to get as string once we have those both we can type in return new string array and the array will be a texture and the signature and boom so now that we have the texture and we have the signature both these values from the url we can return it and that is basically what the player looks like that's how it converts and whatever minecraft code it has so what if we get an error in here what will cause an error in this code right here there will be two reasons you can get an error the first reason will be the player does not exist uh, mojang is like you typed in a name of like blah 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 the name does not exist so that will cause an error and the second error will be too many polls to the mojang website so you can only have a certain amount of actual like pull requests like going into the website and then pulling stuff out um my experience i haven't ha ran into an error using this this method but you could just so you know you could run into that error if you do too many requests within a certain amount of time and what if that happens get an error we can go ahead and catch it and we're gonna catch it with something nice type an entity player and we'll call this uh p we'll set equal to a craft player player dot get handle so instead of just making it spawn with a steve or an alex skin if instead of md5 i type in md6 and that player does not exist let's go ahead and just spawn in with whatever players running the command so game profile call this profile set equal to p dot get profile once we have the profile, we can create the property, property, property equals profile dot get properties dot get textures. And we're going to do iterate that. Get the first one. Oh, not that has next. Next. Go ahead, import property, and it's going to be the Mojang one right here. Com dot mojang dot off lab dot property property and once we have the property we do the same exact thing as above property dot get value string signature equals property dot get signature and then we can use the same exact return probably could just take it out of the try to catch but whatever so if you, you can kind of probably see what's going on here after we just did all that you can now see what's happening here we have the property of the player through the game profile we have the property and we're getting the texture and the signature from the property just like we did up here we have the property and we're getting the, the texture and the signature from it so like i said this will just get the property of the player running the command while this will get the properties of the string name right there so uh real quick what the hell does a signature look like and just so you guys are aware what they look like this is why you'll see probably a lot of videos they probably just go to the website and they grab it themselves and this is what it looks like so it's super long you can just keep spacing it down until we get the whole thing so this is what a signature looks like a player signature. I don't even know. I think this might be my signature. I'm not even sure. I don't know where I got it from. But this is what a signature looks like. This is what converts to a skin. I have no idea how it converts to a skin, but you know it does. It converts to a skin. 
So this is what the information will look like in the signature. And then it'll, it'll look pretty similar to the texture too. So it's just a bunch of random ass uh, numbers and letters. So some people you'll see just go to the website and they grab this and they put it in here. But uh, we're going to do it the smart way. We're going to get it automatically. All right. Now that that method is done, what can we do? We can hop into the create NPC method and we just add that info in there. So we're going to add in a string array and we'll call it name and we'll set it equal to get skin and we're passing in the player and the skin. And then we're going to do game profile, which is our profile up here that we created. Game profile and we're going to do get properties and what properties we want to put in the texture properties texture uh, textures and we're going to pass in a new uh, property and the new property will be again the textures and then the actual textures which is name zero and name one it's array based we created an array and we're passing in an array so array started zero if you didn't know so we're getting that first value, which is the texture, we're getting that texture. And then the name one will be the signature, we're passing that in. And we are done. That is how you change a skin for an NPC, just like that. The code will of course will be in GitHub for my patron supporters. And before we can actually test it out, we need to do one more thing. And that's hopping into our command and changing this how it works. So we're going to say if args.length equals zero, that means they're not running a uh, anything after the command. So we're going to say npc dot create npc player, and we're going to pass in player dot get name. And we'll say player, uh, let's copy this. So we're, we're letting people choose what NPC they want to make, obviously. So uh, similarly, we can just copy this and paste it right here. And instead of player.getName, we can type in args of zero. So oh, when someone types in the commands, create NPC. If they don't type in anything after it, we'll go ahead and create NPC with the skin that they have. And let me space down. And if they type in create NPC space, blah, 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 we'll create the NPC whatever, with whatever skin they typed after. And with that all done, we can go ahead, export it, right click, export, jar file, change the name, location, whatever. Now let's see if this works. All right, so I type in create NPC. So if I type in nothing after create NPC, it should create NPC with my skin. Yep, there we go. NPC with my skin right there. And then if I type in create NPC MD underscore five, creates MD underscore five skin. And he's never played on my server before, so it pulled right from the Mojang website. Pretty cool. And then that's all I want to show you guys for today's video. Pretty short for my videos, only 18 minutes, about 40. Uh, next episode, I will go over clicking on the NPC and opening up a GUI for you guys. It'd be pretty cool. Kind of like high pixel. -y. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy the video. And if you did, go ahead, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all very much.